Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, today we're going to do this problem that says a biomechanical model of the lumbar region of the human trunk is shown. Now, there's a bunch of forces and they basically want you to calculate the moments. Okay. So, the first thing that you need to notice is that the forces are symmetrical along the Z Y plane. So, the Z Y plane. So you don't really have to calculate the moments for all the forces around point O. You can just calculate half of them and multiply them by two. It's important to understand that along the uh, CY plane, since we have the same amount of forces, the forces on the left hand side are creating this moment and the forces on the right hand side are creating this moment and are canceling each other out. So there's no moment around the, around the C. Uh, why? Another thing that's important to notice is that there is no, there's no moment around the C because all the forces are going straight up with the C. Since all the forces are going up, there is no moment doing this. So there's only moments around the C plane. You need to do that by observation. So let me write that down. All forces are symmetrical around the CY plane. So there is no moment on Y because they cancel each other out then the C, the C, no moments on C, because all forces are parallel to C axis. All the forces are going straight up, so there's no moment around C. So we only have a moment around X. With that in mind, let's calculate the resultant force. So the sum of the forces, which is equal to the resultant force, is basically two times, and I'm going to go to calculate the forces on the left side of the y-axis, and just multiply by two since they're symmetrical. So we have fr plus, this is resultant, this is fr, this fr. FR plus FE plus FL plus FO. So when you plug these numbers in, you get 2 times 35. This is all in Newtons. Plus 32 plus 23 plus 45. And this is all going up in the K axis, in the K, in the C axis. So this is equal to 270 newtons in the k direction for the resultant force. Now for the sum of the moments around O, which is what I explained to you a second ago, is equal to the sum of the moments around X because the sum of the moments around Y and the C axis is null. And that is equal to, I'm going to only do, again, the left and just multiply by 2. So 2 times. And now you got to calculate the distances between each force and the x-axis. So for example, this would be r, r. Now RO is zero because it's sitting right on top of the s-axis and it's not creating any moment. This distance right here is RL. This distance is RE. 
and that's it. And then you just multiply by two and you would get the same thing here. And this one's sitting right here, so it's not creating any moment. So for FR is minus 0 0.075 F times FR. Now the minus 0 0.075 is in the J and FR is in the K. That's for this one. Then we get plus 0 0.015 in the J times Fe in the K. That is this one. I'm going to go down here because I'm running out of space. Plus 0 0.045 in the J times FL in the K. And that's it. And that is for this one. And this one is FO times 0 because it's sitting right on top of the x-axis. So it's not creating any moment. So I'm not going to write it down. And all of that is multiplied by 2. Because I just said the things on the left and the things on the right are perfectly symmetrical. So once you put all this into your calculator, you get minus 2.22. Now, for the unit vector, you know that j times k is equal to i. So that would be i. And that is in Newton meters. Notice that I did 0 0.075 for this distance. I already converted it to meters. I don't like it working in millimeters. I like working in common units that you always use. You should get into that habit too. Some of the moments around O. So final answer. And final answer.